What's going on people? Welcome back to the channel. Yes, back. Yes, same team, same preview. Let's go. We are facing this time in the Premier League. Obviously, we're facing Crystal Palace again at Old Trafford. So it's Manchester United versus Crystal Palace on Saturday, 3 p.m. kickoff. You know, prime time telly, you know, except it's prime time, but we can't watch it in the UK. Anyway, let's leave that by the side. Let me preview this game quickly for you guys. You know, um, my thoughts on the game, my predicted lineup. How the how's the team looking? You know, where what's what's our shape at the moment? And I think this is I always say this actually to be fair, but once again, you know the way we start the season, this means this is another important game for us. You know, we need to win this game. It'll be nice to win this game, and you know, actually, this will be the first game. Well, if we win this game, it'll be the first time so far this season that we've had we would have had back to back wins because obviously we lost we won our first game against Wolves, then we lost the second game against Spurs, then we won our third game, which is against who do we face Nottingham Forest, then we lost against Arsenal, lost against Brighton, you know, and then obviously if this is just this is just counting obviously Premier League games. But it'll be nice because if we, we won obviously last Premier League game against Burnley, one 0 it was a tight game, you know, I think it was one of those games where you're just trying to get back up to speed and you know, especially after the all the mess that we'd had, we lost to Bayern Munich, lost to Arsenal, lost to Brighton you know, before the international break, lost to Arsenal. And you're thinking, when are, when is the team going to get back in on, on the winning streak, right? Obviously, beating Brighton last game out in the Premier League helped kind of settle nerves a little bit. You know, it was a nerve-wracking game, really 1-0. But now that we've got that, hopefully a bit a little bit of momentum with the back-to-back -back in all comps, you know, beating Crystal Palace on Tuesday, 3-0, lovely win. Obviously, you've seen the post-match review. If you haven't seen it, it's up, it was a live, so sometimes it comes up on the, you know, rather than on the videos, it comes up on the lives. Um, but yes, it um, that game was a nice, like, confidence builder game, right? But it would be nice to just get consecutive wins, back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League and start climbing up that table because I think I incorrectly said last um, preview that we were 8th or 7th and Crystal Palace were 8th. No, we are ninth in the league and Crystal Palace are 10th. So we are really struggling, really top 10, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not good enough. And even if we win this game, I think we'll, it'll take us 12 points. That's still outside the top five, you know, that's, you would, we'd, if Villa don't win, West Ham don't win, etc. we'd be six. And that's not good enough because our season hasn't started how we wanted it to, but we do need to build that momentum. Of course, we need to win this game. So like I said, it's a very, very, very important game. Thankfully, we've got some players coming back. You know, we saw in the last game against Crystal Palace on Tuesday that Amrabat came in, Mount came in for the 45, min 45 minutes. You know, you had Varane being back in the back line, which is huge, huge for this team. So it was just nice to see those things, those players coming back in into play and hopefully building up. I've seen news that Mainu might be not too far off. Even Ahmad might be not too far off, maybe after the October international break. So we're looking like we're building and, you know, the, the hope is that we don't then get more injuries or new injuries to other players. Obviously, we've still got the long-term, you know, absentees like Luke Shaw and um, the unavailable players like Jaden Sancho and Anthony. Uh, who knows when they'll be back, to be honest. But this game, and in terms of the starting lineup for this game, I think it's actually going to be very interesting. It's, you know, across, across the fan base, I don't really think anyone is going to be able to predict this like hundred percent accurately, you know, with with hundred percent confidence. Anyway, you know, you, you could you could get it right just by luck, but I think, or maybe you know, turn out very very well. But I think it's 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 a very interesting one this time. My point is the lineup is actually kind of looking at what we did, how last game went, and who he brought on, you know, that kind of stuff, and how 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 long he gave certain players. Um, and the way I see it, right, I think, well, let's start let's start with the easy stuff, right, and obviously the easy stuff is. Onana and Onana in the in at goals. Um, I find it. I still find it weird that he started that last game because he probably didn't need it. But I think Ten Hag's trying to build his confidence. Easy clean sheet, good confidence build up. You know, I will take it. So Onana in goal. Now the back line. Varane is back. So well, let's start right back. Obviously, Dallo's going to play right back, right? There's no reason to suggest otherwise. Wamba Saka is one of probably the longer term ab absentees. He's not going to be back. Varane, like I said, is back. So I would I believe he'll just, he'll be starting the game i don't see any reason why he wouldn't be obviously we've got a press conference coming up later on today 
Um, so I don't really, you know, unless unless Tenar comes and tells us that somebody else is injured, which hopefully, like I said, <laughs> it does not the case. Varane should be starting in that back line along with Lindelof, I'd say. And if Regulon is fit, Regulon will start left back, I reckon. Now, obviously, there's question marks over Regulon's fitness. And question marks in over that left centre back as well. Will Lindelof play that position or will Ten Hag put it, put Lindelof on the right hand side, put that on the left? From what we saw in that first Crystal Palace game, I don't see him changing it too much. I think he would actually keep it either the same in terms of playing Amrabat at left back or Regulon will be back and he'll put, Am- uh, put Regulon in at left back. I think Regulon will be back. So I've gone for Regulon at left back and I don't think he's going to play Maguire because I don't think Maguire is his preferred centre back anyway if he has to play him he'll play him but if Lindelof is available and Varane's available why does he need to play Maguire he doesn't and you saw even when Lindelof came off came on sorry in um at Crystal Palace on Tuesday he was great you know there was no issues there so I see the back line being like this unless obviously Regulon is injured and then it'll probably be Amrabat again at left back which worked very very nicely um in the last game because Amrabat moves into the midfield, he inverts, and that's what our fullbacks are. Ten Hag tries to get our fullbacks to do anyway, right? So, in that vein, I've actually gone for a slightly different formation. You know, the the, four, the usually I usually just stick four two three one. You know, on on these formation things, but Ten Hag has done this diamond thing, and now I'm not the biggest fan of the diamond, but when you want to kind of shoehorn some of these players in, and you know, make sure people are playing, we we pack out that midfield, see how they look. Um, maybe for a little bit anyway, especially if we, we should be beating Crystal Palace, right? I think he'll probably go for the, the diamond, I don't know, in and out of possession, whatever you want to call it. But Casemiro basically holding that diamond um, as the number six, because that's what he is. That's that's what he is for our team. Obviously, you could say Amrabat could do that, but I think he'll probably, Casemiro, that will be his position. Um, unless obviously him and Amrabat are doing double pivot in other, you know, in other games or as the forty-three-one, um, then you, I think Mount will get another forty-five minutes. I think he'll get another forty-five minutes or at least sixty minutes to build his fitness back into it. So I do think he'll start the game because he came off so early in the last game. So Mount and Amrabat in midfield with Bruno in, in at number ten behind the two strikers of uh, Hoyland and Rashford. Now, if you look at if you look at the um, the formation there and if you look at the players on the pitch clearly we can easily move to that 4-2-3-1 you know you can have Casemiro and Amrabat holding then you've got Mount on the right or Bruno on the right then you've got Rashford on the left and Hoyland up front and you know Mount or Bruno in that number 10 so it's quite easy to kind of do the in-game formation changes that I think Ten Hag likes doing anyway on and off the ball you know on the ball you're playing at a certain formation off the ball you're playing a certain formation and Amrabat is the kind of player that can help shift around a little bit in that regard, I mean, a lot of our players can actually play in multiple positions anyway. So I think it, it, it would probably be something I like like that, where we kind of switch game, switch formations in game, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think that's that's that would be my predicted lineup. Obviously, like I said, you know, if Regulon is injured, that will change. You know, you probably stick Amrabat at left back and very similar to what you did in the um, the first Crystal Palace game. But definitely Bruno and Rashford are coming back into the team, right? Let's let's just be honest. Pelestri, Ganacho and uh, and Heb Medjbri and all of that, they played really well, but they're still below in terms of in the pecking order, the senior players. Now, as we discussed in the post match review on the live with you know in the comments, no one is undroppable and everyone should be fighting for their places. So, you know, same with Bruno, same with Rashford. But for now, they are still ahead of those guys. Like that's just my opinion. And I'm pretty sure that is the manager's opinion as well. Um, but yeah, it's good to have. It's nice. It's a nice to have to know that. Cool. If Russia is not performing, hopefully Ten Hag will take him off and bring on a Ganacho. If you know we're struggling on that right hand side, Pelestri is more than ready to come on to you know sh- show what he's been showing already. Absolutely excellent performances. Um, and yeah, so in in terms of Crystal Palace, you know, like we've already see, we've seen exactly not what to expect, but we've seen what they have at their at their disposal on Tuesday. Now they played. There were a few players that they were they they were missing. I believe um, you know Eze didn't play the whole game. For example, came on. I can't remember when he came on, but he came on during the game. So they're going to be going full strength, of course, and they'll probably be a bit more motivated in this game than they were in the Carabao Cup game. So we should come out guns blazing. We should come out expecting you know a uh, a different animal, a different beast in Crystal Palace, and I'm hoping that our players are ready for that. You know, especially the especially the guys that didn't play 
in on Tuesday, like the Rashfords, the Brunos, because they not that they've got a point to prove, but in some in the eyes of some fans, I guess they definitely do have a point to prove to show that okay, these guys played really well on Tuesday. Can you guys do better or, or match or do better than them as the more senior players? So yeah, I'm expecting Crystal Palace to come out and really give us a game, but we should be beating them again. So my prediction for this game, I predicted 2-0 last game, I believe, um, and they finished 3-0. I'll take that. <laughs> um, but this time, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go 2-0 again. I think Palace, like I said, will be a bit more hungry, a bit more uh, motivated in this game. Um, I, to be honest, we could we could beat them again 3-0, to be honest, because Hoyland's going to be starting, you know, Rashford's going to be hopefully quite hungry, Bruno's going to be... Bruno's on form. I think Bruno's coming into a, a nice vein of form. Casemiro's looking really good at the moment after last game. Mount looked really good in that 45. Amrabat is going to hopefully start. And we look, we're looking good, you know, but let's temper the enthusiasm for now. So, like I said, this will only be our second back-to-back -back win in the Premier League. Or, a second? Our... our First time winning back to back in the Premier League this season if we win this game. So let's just make sure we get the W. That's the main thing. Anyway, that's my preview um, for this game. Let me know your thoughts on the starting lineup and you know the the result. You know, are we gonna win this game? I expect us to win this game. I want us to win this game. We better win this game. Um, as always, I'll try and do a post match review after this game. Might not be straight after because it's a three o'clock kickoff. So I might just do one in the evening. Um, once again, hopefully it'll be alive so you can jump on and let me know your thoughts on the game as well. Thanks for watching as always. Drop a like on this video for the algorithm and because you like it. And subscribe to the channel. I will see you on the review.